Hello, welcome to Damon Patch Podcast, episode 273. I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Adrian Petty's here. Hi. Matt Lawrence is here. What's up? Uh, coming to you live from Anchor, our new podcast live? host. No, not live, no. But uh, Live to tape. Hopefully the downloads are better for you. We noticed the downloads are a little bit better for us, personally. Uh, I would say significantly better, depending on time of day. Yeah, it was a good, like, maybe five seconds faster for me. So like, and that that's probably really gonna help on. Although that was that's that was simply just playtime without downloading. That was just direct stream from the server. Well, that's what I was gonna say is someone that has like auto download on or something is probably really gonna be benefiting. Right. So yeah, um, some of the top stories for today. We got some Overwatch updates and some needed updates. I think. Uh, I'm glad they're working on this. Um, some lamo updates. You mean? Well, you play as Reaper, right? Yeah. They're nerfing Reaper a bit. Of course they are. He he's deadly though. Nerf, yeah. nerf me away, nerf it away. I I played. I started playing more Reaper and Reinhardt. Those are becoming. Those are quickly becoming my mains. Oh wow! Because Reaper's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hellblade. Hellblade developer is an, announcing a new experimental horror project uh, called Project Mara. Mara. How's this spelled? M A R A. Mara. 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 Uh, Ko- Kojima Productions has plans to work on smaller games, anime, manga, and uh, movies, as well as um, larger productions. Uh, Last of Us t- uh, Part 2 has a job listing for PC programmer. We'll talk about that a bit. Uh, Dying Light 2, more delays here. Uh, delayed indefinitely. And Matt, we were talking about this. It's kind of funny that this came up. Ubisoft wants to make its games more unique, and they're restructuring their editorial team because their games all feel the same their editorial team it's the team of people they said it's like 100 people who around 100 people who decide what goes into what game and stuff and, and oh, okay. where the stories come from and so they, they're they recognizing that they also have a very similar feel to all their games and they're trying to they're trying to change that a bit i'd say the only one that's any unique has any uniqueness is far cry yeah but we'll, we'll get into that um later um what's new guys Go ahead, Matt. Uh, I'm still playing that. Still playing that that God of War right now. I'm getting close though. I'm kill- well, I have. Although you see, you say people have to give you different, uh, different, uh, uh, like schedules on where you where you're at. Well, that's exactly it. Is so I was I was one mission. So I just completed a mission where you go into a vault. I'm being intentionally vague. Where you go into a vault, and the mission like that was the mission I just did, but I was one mission back. And I said that I was, like, I told somebody who had beaten the game that that's where I was, and they were like, you have a lot to do. And then I beat this mission, and it's like, oh, you're almost done. <laughs> like, what? I think your memory gets skewed when you've played a game. It, it, it kind of all fuses into one memory, right? And I lose track of where you are or how much work needs to be done to get to the end. Yeah. I, Bloodborne, I, I was way off in, in telling Marty where he was at because I just, that whole game is all... It's all, and you can do it out of order somewhat. And Dark Souls is like seeping into my memory of that too now Jeez, and, and bloodborne so. you can just like skip whole areas yeah like there's a yeah. whole optional castle like there's a whole fucking castle yeah that is just optional and if you don't have that fucking item in that one spot that carriage is not going to come by and pick you up that's, that's pretty it. you just literally just don't do it the first boss you face is optional too i think really yeah he's because he's just on the bridge and then once you beat him <laughs> there's nowhere else to go you can't cross the bridge any further and it's just that's it so you, you don't need to do him at all you can go straight to Gascon. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. People people are still fucking obsessed with trying to get through that door. At the end of that bridge, the door on the left. Because it's weird. Because well, because it they they could they was confirmed that that is You can a, find the opposite side. You can find the opposite side and you can't open it, but it was in an early trailer, it shows you going through that door. Clearly they instead of going through Gascon, like they, they meant for you to go after that boss to go through that so way. They probably restructured it. And they just how restructured it and they said, fuck it, we're just gonna close it off. Yeah. Like, there's also um And it's and it's actually a wall texture and they did literally just like it's a wall layer and they just put a door on the Because you can try the door. You could you could try the door on the other side. Yeah. But on 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 the the side where you first see it with Av past the bird, mm-hmm. it's it you can't interact with this because it, the game sees it as a wall. Oh, that's there's, funny. There's nothing there. Yeah, but there there also is like unfinished bosses that people have found in the game as well. Mm-hmm. So it could just be things get left over, unfinished. Yeah. You know, never went back to it or whatever. I would love it if they just open that door though. Just send send an update and just have yeah, us, just let's go through that door. Uh, yeah. Um, Matt. Oh, I guess that was you. 
That was me. Well, the only other thing I guess I've been doing is I'm killing the Valkyries on, in, in God of War. It's like a side thing. That's and a difficult it, task. And I spent three hours practicing to kill one, and I finally <laughs> killed it. The third one. You're playing Bloodborne in God of War. That's what you're doing. Pretty much. But I like the fact that it's optional. Like, if it's too bad, I'll just leave. Yeah. I never beat a single one. I couldn't you do never it. beat a single Valkyrie? Couldn't do it. Each of them, t- well, the first two, you took me an hour each, and then this one took me three and a half hours. What's, uh, what's so tough about them? They're they're just, they're very, they're just really good at fighting. So, like, the last one I did, it there's, there's, there's blockable attacks, and then there's unblockable attacks that need to be dodged. And some of them can be parried. So there's parryable attacks, ones that can be blocked, and then ones that can't be blocked at all, and you have to dodge. So this this one, this one, this one will like fly around like on the ground, so she'll kind of like jump around, and then she jumps at you, and you have like a second for it to either be parryable, not parryable, like and, and blockable, or just do damage. And she has this other one where she'll like be like miles away from you, and then she'll just yell Valhalla, fly into the air, <laughs> and you literally have less, I'd say, a second or less to dodge. If you don't, she kills you. It's like 50%. She literally stands on you and shoves her heel into your neck, screaming useless. Useless, worth, unworthy. And she just keeps sta- stepping on your neck. So it was... I can uh, relate. <laughs> and they're all different too, right? They all have every different, single one of different, different fighting different. styles and stuff. One of them had like these weird gas grenades that you could actually catch in your shield and throw them back. So that, that was the, the, the one. There was one, which might, might have been that one, that had a bunch of ads. So like she would summon all this like whole group of these other guys. How I beat this one, I got her like. So what I what I do is I learn like I try different tactics and then the different like different weapons and stuff, and then I choose like a loadout, and then I choose like tactics. And how I beat her was, I got I found out that it was easier to dodge her like un unblockable like jolt like her spear attack, if I was if my right side was always clear. So what I did was I whenever she was far away, I would always have my shield up. And I was I would always keep my right side clear. I'd never be beside a wall. And then if she if she moved at all, I would always dodge right. That way, if she did Valhalla, I she would miss, and then I wouldn't get as much opportunity to attack. But I'd still get a couple hits in. Mm-hmm. If she did the the jolt, then I was like just like a quarter of a frame like over to the right, like like just in time. And then if she did like the regular attack, all I had to do was turn slightly to block her swinging. So I, I figured that out. And then at the end, what I did was like I found out that you could. When you picked up health, because they drop health after you do some of the damage to them, they drop health like throughout the fight, but it's not very much. When you actually pop the crystal, that like you hit this crystal and it like makes you heal, it actually stuns her. Mm. So normally with this one, she was particularly susceptible to heavy attacks. So what I would normally do is go three lights, one hit, and it would like do this combo. But what I learned was is when she, if I was hitting her and she dropped a thing, I would stop attacking her. Like I, w- I would stop attacking her with at the three lights, so she wouldn't get knocked back. Then I'd, I'd like pound the the crystal, even if I was full health, which stunned her again, and then I'd get another fucking uh, full combo on her. Do they have health bars? I don't remember. Yeah, they do. So you can see how much like your damage you're doing. And- yeah, mm. it, it it was. Uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's so rewarding because you literally at the end you and this is like really violent, but you step on their back and you rip their wings off just with pure force. See, you describing that <laughs> fight reminds me a lot of Castlevania games on the <laughs> NES and the SNES. Oh, and Jesus. and what you had to what you go through to like, oh, if I do stand here and do this, I can cheese it and kind of, you know, take a hit on this, but I can then be in a position to do that. That is pretty much all the boss fights in Castlevania. Oh. And you're literally just positioning yourself in strategic parts around the map. It's like, oh, I like, oh, this boss here, I'm literally just gonna hunker down in the corner, stay crouched, and just brute force my way and just hope <laughs> that I can get through this faster than this guy because I can't like because I just don't have the weapon to do this. Jesus. Do you know how many Valkyries there are? Eight. And I like discovered the throne room before mm-hmm. I actually needed to. So what? So I mean, this is all side stuff. So it's spoiler for side stuff. But so basically, there's there, I found this throne room, and like there's like some dialogue about like oh we like, you know eight thrones like that's interesting like, or, or, I thought he said seven thrones. But I guess there's eight, but there is eight Valkyries for sure. Um, but he's like wow, like he's like I. I think this is what like uh, your Mimir or whatever he was, he was like I think this is what what I think it is but I'm not sure kind of thing, and then I killed one Valkyrie and nothing really came of it other than I be- the fact that I beat her and then I beat the second and then it gave me a quest to actually go there. Oh, okay. And so yeah. now when I go there I can actually place because you rip off their I don't know if it's their head or their helmet but it certainly it might be both. <laughs> it might be both. But it's yeah. God of War. It might it's probably it might the head, be yeah. both. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. 
Adriano. Hi. What's new? Uh, mainly Overwatch because of the obligatory event that they. Keep yeah, on. I got I got my Winston skin today. I uh, I'm probably halfway through. Um, uh, I been meaning to go back to Shovel Knight, the final campaign that I I enjoy, but I always don't play it because I then just go back to Dead Cells, <laughs> which is a problem. And out of six six runs that you need to do in that game, you need to be the game six times on six different uh, six different difficulties. I am just getting through my second. Um, I got to the end boss of the second difficulty, but I couldn't beat him. Mm. But fuck that game, something else. <laughs> um, I made a map. I had to map out paths. But oh wow! I'll I'll send you guys that. Because, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. I haven't had a chance to play. Um, uh, well, going back to Overwatch, what do you think about uh, Capture the Flag Blitz? I, I did not like it the it. first two yeah. times that I played it, but then after you told me to go back and keep going, I actually very much enjoyed it. Yeah, it's fun. I, I should have, I should have. it was probably like four minutes flat of the one match. Um, I ended up, We ended up winning, but it was just pure fucking chaos. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I may, I maybe I did hit record. Maybe I do have a recording <laughs> of it, but holy fuck that, it was insane. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm so glad that we won because if we went through all that and right. we didn't, I feel bad for the other team. So but. did you find out what happens when you go into overtime? No. I did. Happened to me today. And? They move even closer. Like, oh my like, God. Like, um, what's that one map where like there's that uh, there's that big circle in the center and then inside the circle there's like another circular building that you can kind of go through. It has like the boost pad on it. Oh, Oasis. Is that yeah? Yeah. So it's, uh, the you know, the university always is. Yeah, yeah. So the flags are like outside of that bigger circle. Yeah. For blitz. Yeah. They move inside the circle for overtime, mm-hmm. and so you literally just have to navigate around that one structure in the middle oh, uh, to fuck. fight. Yeah. So we, but how many how many points were each? What were you guys tied three at? Three and three. I think. Holy shit. Yeah. That's fucking insane. And then I find you get a lot more wins than you do in traditional um, because the games, the flag. because the games are. <laughs> like three minutes and you're done yeah that's another thing Marty, yeah. marty's like it's it's good and bad when when you're losing you lose quickly yeah and that, that's kind of good because you, you, you got your wins yeah but yeah yeah that's uh i haven't had a chance to play vampire because i i'm filling my weekends again with work so mm. i'll get back to it we saw we saw dunkirk on sunday 1917 yes that's what i meant to say not <laughs> wrong war but wrong war yeah <laughs> i don't know why i had dunkirk in my head but we saw 1917 it was great. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Yeah, very uh very the long harsh, shots were fucked. Like. Very harsh imagery. Yes. Yeah. That uh that clunky realism. I know why you said Dunkirk though. It has that same kind of vibe, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. It looks like it was it looked like it could have been like shot by the same person too. Yeah. You, you, you you probably could take two scenes from each movie, stitch them together and and like just seamlessly blend it. But Yeah. Yeah, no good. It was very good. The, than, I don't uh, know if you noticed this, but there's like I mean, it's in the trailer. There's like that button scene when he's running, yeah. and he's not. Remember, you, I think what your brother said there, he wasn't supposed to bump into anyone. Yeah, he takes that two first fall. guy that he bumps into doesn't get back up. Maybe because uh, I noticed that, and I was like, "Oh, damn!" He was the actor's probably waiting for a cut. Yeah, probably. Cut! That's, that's what he, I figured. Or, he, or he's hurt. <laughs> yeah, he's hurt. Like his his bayonet probably got shoved back oh. in there. <laughs> I imagine they might have. Well, I don't know if, if they're just running. I was going to say, maybe they had like a rubber gun, but if they were running, maybe they just thought, oh, we'll give them real guns and then just run out there. You know? Yeah, maybe. I would hope all the bayonets are fake. Because they're probably not expecting them to run into each other. <laughs> well, they fucking Because he wasn't twice. supposed to, yeah, right? Yeah, full so. out, too. Yeah. But, yeah, it was really good. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, I've been uh, hitting the Red Dead pretty hard, actually. I finally got into the groove of it, I think. Uh, the game pisses me off immensely, though. Talking about Red Dead Online specifically. Red Dead Online, yeah. It it makes me angry just how many glitches are in that game still. What what pisses me off is that is that Rockstar seems to get a pass for not pushing out things like updates quickly. Mm-hmm. And I'm totally fine with them taking their time making things like rolls and stuff, but I'm not I'm really not okay with the slowness of updates. Like, oh, we're aware of the animals not not working since before Christmas. It's like, okay, Animals don't work. Like so, you have, like they don't spawn correctly. The oh, are they meant like up. they were doing weird shit? Like no, they like were, they, no, they're all like fucked up. Fucking flying <laughs> cougar. <laughs> That'd be freaking scary. Or but. like a hat, or like a like a bird with like a fedora or something. Just no, yeah, because like one of the one of the roles is a trader where you hunt 
and get pelts and then deliver it to your guy and then you sell it. And mm-hmm. it's a big money maker. And it's a big money maker and you there's there's lobbies you join that just don't have any animal whatsoever. And and at at like a second's notice your lobby might just stop spawning animals too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I started a stranger mission today and it just didn't work. It was like look for clues of a bear attack and I found a dead guy and I found a tree with marks on it. Couldn't investigate it. I think I think my, my game did the same I think my mission I think I did that mission just, too and it didn't work. It's broken. It's just it's, it's frustrating. Every, I've, every time I play that game I encounter a glitch somewhere. There's also that glitch where it says you can't invite anyone or stand down your posse because content is starting when, right. it, when the content is yep. not starting. Yeah, and you said they, that that they weren't going to address major things like the animals until they do another role update or something. I assume, what, like what I what I assume is happening because I I personally don't see many updates pushed to the game. No, it's they're pretty seldom. But so I, what I assume is they save it all for an like a content update. I assume, but like if you're talking about another role, this outlaw pass lasts until the end of March or March at some point. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about let's say beginning of April for possibly a new content update and yeah. that might fix it. Yeah. But with every update comes more bugs. So like what if there's more problems? Are they just gonna wait another like four months? Uh also I've gotten addicted to Microsoft Solitaire. That is weird. I saw you playing I I was on my <laughs> Xbox companion app yeah. was open. I saw it. I'm like what the this has got to be a mistake, right? No, so here's what happened. Um I think it was the first week we I came back to work after the holidays, our internet went down at work. And so I just started booting up Solitaire and playing that just for fun, and I just kind of got addicted to it, and I've I've learned that they have achievements. It has achievements, yeah, yes. Fuck yeah, they do. <laughs> but okay, I, I've I, also, I cleared those. <laughs> I've also just learned um, better ways to play it that I never really knew before, because I had just played solitaire like randomly when you're bored or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's actually a there's a little bit of a skill to it, which yeah. is kind of fascinating. They have quite they have quite a few modes on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I played quite a bit of it. I, I got into the same thing. It was like a couple of days in a row where I was just playing solitaire mm-hmm. probably last year sometime. But yeah, it was uh, it's quite fun. And you can sign into your Xbox account yep. on it and stuff. Yep. So it's hilarious. Yeah, but uh, that's what I, I've been I just wish they would add a, a Churchill solitaire. Mm. But. Uh, we were one that Donald Rumsfeld made. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the ads are annoying, but um, you can pay like a, uh, you can pay like twenty dollars or something to twenty get bucks. It's something like that. Yeah. That's fucking insane. Two should be max. One time fee of two dollars. Well, no, just, I just want to buy the game outright. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. if Solitaire is worth twenty bucks. You can find it free almost any, everywhere. With that, you can play it yourself with a deck of cards. Um, all right, let's hop into the stories for this week. Uh, so yeah, we're talking we're talking about Overwatch. Um, Reaper is particularly um, overpowered, in my opinion, just because he regains forty percent of his health uh, when he does damage. What? Or recovers forty percent? Sorry, recovers forty percent of damage, damage done. done. Sorry. To, yeah. Oh yeah. And so when I'm fighting him as Moira, you can't kill him. If he's, yeah, but, if he's yeah, but shooting Moira you, can also fire an orb and kill people without being in the room. Moira has her own issues. Yeah. But I'm just saying that that when he's shooting you, you basically can't kill him. Yeah. And if you're if you're Reaper on Reaper, whoever gets the first hit off first <laughs> oh, is yeah, win. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, in the PTR they're going to be uh changing that along with several other characters. Um which I'll go through in a bit. But they're taking Reaper down to thirty. Thirty percent of damage done. You remember what, what it originally was? No. When he first started, or he used to collect those orbs or something too, right? The, you you get the you, you same thing, but the the damage done to the opponent drops as a as an orb, and you actually have to go get it to yeah. get that health back. It wasn't instant. <coughs> I don't mind the way he does it now, but it, it, it is too much. Forty mm-hmm. percent. So we'll see how thirty does. Um, they're also changing Hanzo. Um, his storm arrows, the damage reduced from seventy to sixty. It's still five though, right? They took an arrow away last time. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard anything but the yeah. but any er- other arrows. Uh, McCree, his base health is being increased from two hundred to two fifty. I was I was seeing that, but with Reaper though, why not just reduce his health slightly instead of if it's still give him forty percent back, but just take twenty points no, but, off. No, but of the hit. problem is like uh, he can recover it faster than he can lose it. Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, um, McCree is also his primary fire recovery time increased from point four two seconds to point five seconds. I love how like tiny, minuscule the changes are to some of I these. I would love to see the fucking data, the data that they have, like all the numbers on a spreadsheet. Yeah, and then Dead Eye firing Dead Eye no longer locks the player's aim. Now I'm not sure what that means because I don't play as McCree. Uh, I think I think you can't move 
you can't move your your camera. Oh, okay. Before now, right. you can. Uh, so then they had the Reaper change. Uh, Arissa, her fusion driver, which was a primary fire, damage reduced from 11 to 9. Uh, fortify cooldown increased from 8 to 10 seconds. And then Halt, uh, snare reduced, uh, snare re duration reduced from 1 to 0.65 seconds. Sigma, is this his first change that they've done to him? Because he's a pretty new character, right? Yeah, he's, he's the newest one. Range reduced from 22 to 20 meters. Uh, what? It was it was uh, hypersphere's. Okay, they fire super slow. I know. And I can't play them. Yeah, I think it's two at a time, and then you have to like do a little reload animation. Holy crap! Gravitic flux can now be interrupted before targets begin falling and impact. Uh, impact slow duration reduced from point nine to point six seconds. I, I don't know how you interrupt it. Isn't know. that his ultimate? This is don't ultimate. You, don't you have to kill him to interrupt it, or can you like? I may, maybe you can hack it. Like, oh, oh yeah, maybe. or or stun him or something. Yeah. And then accretion, explosion damage reduced from 60 to 40. And then finally, Baptiste, uh, biotic launcher, uh, recovery time increased from 0.36 to 0.45. And biotic launcher, uh, the secondary fire, heal explosion reduced from 60 to 50. So he's getting a nerf on his healing abilities. It's kind of interesting. It's funny, I never used Baptiste as a, as a healer. I used him as a fighter. I really like his gun. Do you normally like burst weapons? Yeah. I, no, I, no, no. Actually, sorry. Normally, I don't like burst yeah, weapons. For some reason, I do like his, though. I can't stand burst weapons. Yeah. Holy man. Yeah. For him, for him though, like, I just... I never... Especially Mr. Heroes, I I, I get him. I'm like, oh, fuck, I gotta play as Baptiste. But as soon as I start moving and start firing as, it, mm -hmm. at his, as him, I'm fine. It's funny. Now that they're, like... They have so many characters, the balancing must be getting even harder and harder to do. <laughs> right? It reminds, it reminds me of a... Of a of a board game that I play that has just like three hundred different races that you can play <laughs> oh as. <my> God. And, <laughs> and when asked when asked how to how to deal with balancing in the game, the creator said, "I think he said something along to like balancing is for pussies." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeez, I was just, at a certain point you just don't care anymore. I guess I, I mean like fucking smash, like I was, like balancing that must be. Nightmare. I get. I guess. I, I. I get it that it's a game, and you want everyone to like a character, not because it's overpowered, but just because it you like the character. But I mean, sometimes things are just better than others, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I also just find every character now has one too many abilities, which is unusual because you think they'd be, they'd be running out of abilities to give characters. Yeah, but it's just, like like Baptiste. I think like Baptiste not only can throw a anti-death barrier like a thing he can do a uh a a spread heal he can do a heal grenade he can do primary fire and he has a super jump <laughs> yeah like i feel like one of those things needs to go um like every new character i think has just has one too many abilities i think ash was the last one that feels just like ash feels like a tr like a like an original traditional yeah. simple yeah uh uh overwatch character and Sigma is just like a fucking Sigma and, and Mora Sig should I Sigma and Mora should be in their own little spin off cosmic <laughs> yeah. realm somewhere. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh the Hellblade developers um have a new project called Project Mara or Mara. Fuck yeah. Uh, this comes to us from GameSpot. Uh Ninja Theory has in has interest in using the interactive aspect of video games to explore issues surrounding mental health. And now the studio has announced a new project along those lines. Uh, in a short introductory video, the team explains the goals of Mera and how it ties into its overall vision. Project Mera is described as a representation of mental horror, or mental terror, sorry, recreated realistically. The team says it only features one character in one location and acknowledges that it's an experimental idea. It hopes that this will help forge a new storytelling medium. Uh, no platforms were announced for Mera, but it's in the early stages of, uh, early stages, so it may be targeting the next generation of console hardware. Well, Without being said, we know it's going to be Xbox Game Pass. And probably PC then at that point, too. Yeah. Um, this is interesting, though, because I think they, they, they did a really good job with Hellblade and, and getting that. Yeah, ba based on their description, I, I have faith in them. Yeah, so mental like, terror, though, sounds horrifying. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what that means. One person, one room, kind of like PT, I guess, maybe? Yeah. But w what is it? Mental terror? Mental terror recreated realistically. I need that Dolby Atmos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matt, you should play Hellblade. You'd probably like Hellblade, yeah. I think you would. 
I got I got two big games to do right now. I got God of War and Hellblade. Then I do that, Hell, AC Matt, Origins. I finish Hellblade in two sittings. No, but I don't want to start something else. I don't want to add anything to that mix. Yeah. Well, when when God of War is done, yeah, you replace it with Hellblade. No, I'm, more I'm doing, Norse I'm doing mythology. Origins. I'm beating Origins. Then next. You, you stay in the Norse mythology. No, I'm I'm beating Origins next. Oranges? AC AC Origins. Yeah, oranges? Yeah, yeah. AC Florida Oranges. Trump did that. Yeah. Yeah. What he played AC Florida Oranges. No, he too? couldn't. He couldn't say Origins. Origins. He, he said oranges. Oranges. Yeah. God. <laughs> you know the beginnings. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm excited for this. And Matt, you already own Hellblade. That's fine. I'm not saying anything about it. I I want to beat Assassin's Creed Origins <laughs> first. Uh, Minecraft is not on the Game Pass. Ah, Marty wanted to play it. I'm like, yeah, I own it. And then I went and checked. It's on. It's on. Uh, Game that's Pass. pretty good. That's surprising. Mm-hmm. At least not on PC. Maybe it's on Xbox. I didn't check that. On maybe PC it maybe, maybe it's one of those games that are so popular. They still make money off set of the sales. Not, not only that though, but if they put it on Game Pass, you then have a complete that part of the the uh, your player base who has pumped money into that, mm-hmm. who then would say, "Oh, now it's just part of Game Pass." It was still like thirty or forty dollars. Yeah, crazy. It was like GTA Five. It would just stayed at like sixty dollars for like does years Microsoft and years. own Minecraft directly, or do they own Mojang? Mo- they own Mojang that owns Minecraft. Yeah, maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe there's a contract thing there still. And it still got published on PS4, which is hilarious. Actually, yeah, so. it, it isn't considered one of the Microsoft Studios, is it? No, not. It wasn't on that ticket. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, because it was, it was well, purchased but, before. But neither, all that. but neither is like anything from Ninja Theory anymore. Like, it's Microsoft doesn't own Hellblade. They own. Ninja Theory. Ninja Theory, which owns Hellblade. So Ninja Theory has a lot going on right now, actually, because they've got Hellblade 2. they got that other game they announced at uh, E3. Some, like, fun kind of just multiplayer game. And then they got, and then they got I don't this, remember that at all. I don't remember that. It was really kind of disappointing because I was expecting them to announce Hellblade 2, and they came out and announced some, some just, like, action game. What the fuck are you talking about? Look it up. Uh, I believe you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then they got this Project Mara. Mara. They'll, they'll probably do D, DMC2. No, probably not. Well, I, Microsoft I, probably won't want I them. just get a little worried when they start splitting up the teams. It's like the team that made Hellblade now might be have less people or not the vital people or who knows what's going on. But There you go. Uh, speaking of studios uh, splitting up their work, uh, Kojima Productions has plans to also work on smaller games, uh, anime, manga, and movies. This comes to us from GameSpot. So... Um, Japan's Famitsu magazine included a 30-page feature on Kojima Productions in celebration of its fourth anniversary. Uh, Kojima said that he'd be interested in trying to develop smaller games like episodic or digital-only titles while still working on bigger projects more akin to Death Stranding uh, and its time-consuming scope. Kojima has previously worked on smaller games before with uh, PT and uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, Ground Zeroes. I think this would uh, would be pretty cool if he actually started doing all this kind of stuff. Smaller episode, uh, smaller episode. Yeah, because PT stuff? was like kind of so special, and I think he might be able to pull off one of those again. Yeah, that's that kind of sounds like I he just needs do you cash think flow. He, like if you if you told him, "Hey, buddy, do six one-hour th- episodes of a game," do you think you can make something small enough and sustain it in that like kind of keep it self-contained? Why not? You don't think he would just go overboard and? Well, he, he'll have his bigger. He still wants to do bigger games. So he'll have that to focus on, you know. But just if he had just like a random idea, he just kind of puts it out and does it. He probably needs the smaller stuff to have cash flow for that bigger project since he's by himself now. Well, he has Sony to an extent, but... Well, we don't know if they're going to support whatever next game he has. There's that too. This was just kind of like a partnership for this game. Yeah, so... And it's coming to PC, so... Because you can't have like 10 so, years of so no revenue. It, no. no. What's that? You can't have 10 years of no revenue. Well, he doesn't take ten years. Death Stranding only took like four years or something, right? But even still, like it's not that was have four? four years. It might have been less. I don't know. I thought it was, I thought it was less. I thought it was like three. It might, might have been three. Yeah. Yeah. He, he doesn't. He doesn't take as long on games. People, people criticize yeah. him, but he doesn't take long. Yeah. Yeah. Might have been Fucking that. Dying, Light, Dying Light's gonna take longer than 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 fuck. Man, than what the hell happened to that in in, in Dead Island Two? Eh? Like, oh, what the hell's going on? Dead here? Island Two apparently is still in like. Somebody's freaking working still, on it. Still, yeah. Apparently, it's still happening. Like it's a team so, of four so people. Intern, just yeah. Coding well, away. what I what I read. One character a day. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't we read about it when we were playing Di- Di- the first Dying Light? And it was something like, it had it was given to another studio, and they didn't like the work, so they basically had to like I don't know how extensively they had to redo it. 
Like they, they they like looked at it and they were like, "Damn, what the hell? Are you, what the hell were you guys I, doing?" I don't know. I I don't know that I'm going to oh, fuck Dying Light Two. Dying Light Two or Dead Island Two? Either one. I don't know that I'm going to play either one. Well, you, you can't unless you beat that mission, right? No, I think I think I can I can get past that. I think I can work through it mentally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I to be honest, like I think I'm just going to wait for the. It's a fucking horrible ending, anyway. That's fine. I think I'm just going to wait for this spiritual successor to uh, Left 4 Dead, the, the Turtle Rock game that's coming out. Oh, speaking of which, did you hear what uh, Valve said about um, Left 4 Dead uh, 3? Definitely not in the works. Definitely not in the works. Yeah. And they're not doing it. Yeah. I can, I'm can. i not surprised. <laughs> I, you know what? I hope I hope but, it isn't. But, but, but I appreciate the honesty. Yeah. 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 It, it was just fine. Like, they're not... Valve is one of the few companies where they legit when they say, "Oh, we let kind of people do whatever they want." They legitimately let people do whatever the fuck they want, and that's why sh- games don't get made. And they just kind of do Dota stuff. And but there are they they did at one there are leaks uh, when people go on tours and people are like we're taking videos and pictures of monitors. There are people who have nabbed like folders that mm. said like Left for Dead Three. Like, right. like at one point it was a possibility. Right. But Turtle Rock is now separate. They're gonna do it. Let's just play that game and have fun with it. On PC, right, guys? Or Xbox Game Pass, wherever the fuck it's going to be on. I'll play wherever wherever the people play. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a man of the hey, people. Is it, hey. is it a zombie game? It is. They said they said they are making what they what they consider to be Left 4 Dead 3. They can't call Left 4 Dead oh, okay. because Valve owns that license, but they are they are call, they say they are making Two Dead, Two Furious. Yeah. Hey, so, so remember, Lewis, remember yeah, our Louis. conversation about Borderlands 3? Yeah. What happened with that? I, I I then realized I could wait longer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I just I saw it on sale and I was like, I got nothing else to play. I'm just playing. Did you Red buy Dead. it at least? No. Okay. Because uh, you told you told me to tell you. Yeah. Um. But I just saw it on sale. I was like, I don't have any major game right now. All the games are getting delayed. It's like, <coughs> okay, I could probably do Borderlands three right now. And then it's like, ah, I'll wait. All right. So that's fair. It kind of sounds like Borderlands is just an obligation more than a, a want. No, no. I think I think when I start playing Borderlands three, I'll enjoy it. But it's just to think back on how much Borderlands I've played. <laughs> I've played. It's one of the few games that I've played over and over again. I played the first one twice, the second one three times, and pre sequel twice. And we played it fairly recently. And so. yes, and Matt, I'm telling you right now, if you said you want to go through all Borderlands, I'm not. I do it again. You're crazy. I do it again. I beat. I beat the first one. A you, couple of th- I think you, a couple of times. Now you want you want to play Borderlands? No, I do not. I do not need to play Borderlands, nor do I want to play Borderlands. Is it still, is it still having issues on PC? Probably. I had some bugs or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like PC gaming to me. I don't have as nearly as many problems as you you as you attest to, Matt. I have more problems on PlayStation than I do on PC. We, we sit there play play Sea of Thieves, and I've had two graphics cards, so completely different graphics cards. And you, like the physical hardware chip was changed, and boot up to these, I'm and not, then you're I'm playing for all of it's I'm like, not, oh, your, your graphical drivers I'm out of date or something. That issues happen on PC. But I'm saying those issues also happen on consoles. We've had we've had like it's CE le- it's dash less, crash errors on PlayStation it's, it's for less, games for months at a time. It's less technical though. It's like, oh, this is broken, can't do anything about it, or oh, this looks like shit, can't do anything about it. See, see, for me, the other way around is like, oh, this is on PC. There's probably a setting somewhere that I can adjust on the fly to make this work. See, I don't want to even when, deal with when that. So. When something <laughs> breaks on console, you're at the mercy of the uh, yeah. of either Sony or the developer. That's fine. And by it could me. take a while to fix. That's fine by me. You just, oh, there it goes. I'm on Matt's side because then the, they know there's a problem. They got to release a patch or something. It, get, it gets worked out. When something breaks on PC, it's like, is this only my problem? And then you got to like problem solve it, and you got to work through like settings and crap. And then it's like, oh, is it is it my GPU? It's like, I'm is now it, I'm now a driver? technician working on this thing. Yeah, I don't, I, pr- I, don't I prefer don't. console gaming, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, speaking of PC, though, uh, Last of Us Part Two has a job listing for a PC programmer. Um, this comes to us from Gamespot. A new job listing posted by Naughty Dog says the developer is looking for someone with a background in PC programming to join the team. Working on the upcoming upcoming PlayStation Four exclusive, The Last of Us Part Two. That's very odd. The job listing is for a graphic graphics programmer uh, who will join the rendering team to develop and implement new and existing rendering techniques for The Last of Us Part Two. The successful applicant will need either console or PC programming experience and have a thorough understanding of current GPU architectures and experience with APIs. Now, hmm. I'm sure it kind of goes hand in hand. 
because they they develop these games on PCs. Yeah, but when was the last time that a Sony first party titles advertised for a position? For I don't know PC? that fact. Yeah. Um, for, if ever. But we have some. We had that rumor of uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn coming to PC. Rumor, rumor. I thought it it was announced. It was a no. report. I thought. I don't. I don't know. It was a rumor. Yeah. Sony hasn't announced that. I thought. It, I thought it was like a report was filed or like so something something official. Yeah. Yeah. It was a report, but I don't think it was. It's like it's like a report from somebody that wow. had some evidence, but yeah. it wasn't like. There's no posters of, from it, like official ones. Yeah. So but anyway, we have a report of Horizon Zero Dawn coming to PC, um, and now we have potentially The Last of Us coming to PC. Sony smartening up. <laughs> This is this is fascinating though. Yeah. This is a whole new era we're entering, and it's kind of it's kind of fascinating. Yeah, you know what's really weird about this is that right now all these games are being delayed, but they're being delayed towards a towards a period where about ten or twelve games are going to be released. Because like the co- two consoles are coming out, mm-hmm. they have to have five games each probably mm-hmm. at least. Yeah, Mac three. Huh? Mac three on PC. Hopefully. Iron Brigade two. <laughs> Who Nobody made, who, wants Iron Brigade. Who Fuck. made Iron Brigade again? What? Who made Iron Brigade? Um, uh, Double Fine. They're, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. They're, it's a, they're owned Brigade. by Microsoft now, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, are they? I think so. Maybe. Iron Brigade is a fantastic game. It is such a... I, Iron Brigade was by Helldivers before Helldivers. That's hilarious. Yeah. You guys want to play Iron Brigade? I have it on it's Steam. It's old, man. It's old. It's so good. They... Do you, you know... Do you remember... Did you ever... Uh, on the ship, you used uh, R2... Or L, L or right trigger to salute. You remember that? Yeah. Okay. For the longest time, the left trigger did not do anything, and then they pushed an update to specifically do the <laughs> alternating salute for each trigger, and it was fucking amazing. That that was amazing. Yeah, it was so great. <laughs> That's such a good game. I would love to see the Last of Us Part Two running on a on a PC uh, GPU though. Would you Would you buy gorgeous. it on PC if it came out simultaneously? You probably not. No. Not simultaneously, but you would probably buy it again, though, right? Yeah, that, yeah. Like you, you like to to tech to run your tests on PC. Yeah, yeah. Just to see how it looks. Yeah. And then turn Matt, it I, I'll, I'll answer this for Ryan. On day one, he would buy it on PlayStation Four and play through it immediately. And then when it goes on sale at some point on PC, he would buy it, play it once, see what it looks like, and then never. Touch what it. about yeah. what yeah. about <laughs> if what about if it's the Last of Us situation where we have the Last of Us comes out on, let like the PS3, and then it comes out with like the enhanced edition on PS4. What if they do The Last of Us 2 on PS4 and The Last of Us Enhanced on PS5 and PC? Which one are you going to buy? What? Oh, I see what you're saying. So I have two options of a better looking like, game. Like it, it, the initial release on PC is the Enhanced Edition right. in my scenario. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know what I would do. Because here's what I did with The Last of Us Part 1. Uh, bought it on PS3 and played it. Yeah. And then when it came to PS4, I bought it again just to look at it. Ugh. <laughs> now, but now you're saying there's two options. I can buy it on PS5 or a PC. That's you know an interesting what, question. You know what he's going to do? He's going to do both. I'm going to buy all three. Yeah. <laughs> That's, it's insane because you don't play them. It brings me joy, though. I like just looking yeah, at it and saying, it like, wow, that looks like, gorgeous. Like and then, how, long is it, do you, how long do you look at it? I, I play a few levels and then and then turn it off and, and I'll go back from time to time and play it again. Like I'm playing Assassin's, uh, Assassin's Creed Origi- or um, Odyssey again on PC. I just boot it up when I'm bored and and run around do a mission and, or two and then leave it. See, I don't have time to do that because there's other things I have to play. But see, Matt, we all have our weird things. I, yeah. make, I make spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of not having time, I finished uh, Arrow season one already. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Those are 22 very long episodes. 23. 23 very long episodes. 45 minutes. I'm only I. It's taking me years, and I'm only in Arrow season three, and the appropriate Flash. To oh yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Because it all gets spliced. In. I think why I'm why I'm flying through it so quickly is because I, I want to catch up to where I was. I I don't know how you have time to watch or play everything that you do. Like you, yeah. you say like, oh, I played this. I finished this game. I play, I watched the season. I think I think it's where fi- the fuck do you get the time to do this? It's pro- it's it's it is it does come down to efficiency, like. I'll specifically like export but, an episode and then it takes twenty but, minutes so I'll watch yeah, something. But I multitask I I will never ever do just one thing on my computer. But if I never I, if I'm doing work on one monitor, I have something playing on the other, and I still don't get through everything. But, but I don't like I don't like I don't know, what do you do a lot? You open like a lot of tickets with companies and stuff. I don't do any of that. I don't do that. I don't but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't make I a two tickets. 
I don't Although think it's a do list. Through my work, I have two more tickets. But see, like, no, see, what's but wait, going but on here? You also work weekends sometimes, right? Yeah, so there's that too. So yeah, you're, you're already work. missing out on like a most of a day on a weekend. Yeah. And then you also have like family obligations and stuff, right? And, and board game groups. And board game groups. I don't I, I don't really have that. I have band practice every now and then, but I still play games afterwards or something. Hmm. Um With Arrow though, what I found in, in binging it is that you really see the formula. The formula. Yeah. The, like I said, the, the 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 person walking into place, the other person walking in the same room, they plant their feet, and it's basic over-the-shoulder shoulder coverage. It's very, <laughs> very efficiently shot. And every episode has a conflict between two of the characters where yeah. they get angry at each other and then resolve it yeah. by the end. Yeah. And it's just it, it's just so frustrating because it just, it just feels fake at that point. Yeah. It's like these people are constantly angry at each other. Why are they around each other? It does. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it is very safe and teen drama ish and it does does pick up a little bit not much but a little bit all their problems are caused by lying to each other yeah or and mis- they, or misunderstanding and they always be like i'm sorry i lied to you and then they'll lie the next episode yeah and it's just <laughs> like oh my god yeah so the, that that's just padding because they have 23 episodes they have to film it's like if you guys cut this in down to 18 i feel bad for the writers yeah 18 you you would be able to make this so much more efficient or 10 yeah or eight, like 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 some streaming shows are now. Eight. But I, I do enjoy the show though. Yeah, it's it's got it's weird. It's really weird. It's weird because for for it being <clears throat> a television production, I enjoy this Arrowverse better than the entire DCEU. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, yeah. It is better and is more faithful, and it feels like a Justice League compared to the actual Justice League movie. What's her name? Laurel bothers me a bit though. <laughs> Laurel Lance. Yeah, <coughs> she seems very like soap opera kind of actor. Mel melancholy or is that it's not a, melodrama? Yeah, yeah, it's just odd. It's just something something's odd about her. Yeah, I guess they're all kind of soap opera ish. The whole show it's, it's CW. They they're appealing to the to <laughs> yeah. the young adult to the nineteen to twenty one crew. Yeah. All right, we already talked about Dying Light two being delayed a bit. It's delayed indefinitely though. Good. Good. Let's just let's just less stuff has to come out. Less less things. Dying Light Two looks really good though. It does look good. But the thing is, is since it's indefinite, does that mean that it's not even going to be a this gen? Like this is a pretty rough time to be delaying stuff. You're at the tail end of this generation. Mm-hmm. Now you have like these people I mean, that are jumping ship to other. The ends. indefinitely thing probably just means that they don't want to put another hard date on it. Yeah. yeah. And so it could it could come out in September. It could come out you know. But usually they'll say like a, like a quarter then. Like oh like but, you know but, we're not doing it in, on this day. But I think we're these doing companies need quarter. to realize to stop putting out these dates so soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I would like to know again. Like you're saying, it's probably the marketing guys. But like what? Like would, it, it would, creates, does marketing suffer if you don't give them a date? No, or are they it, just being anxious? It creates buzz. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you had a story come out about uh, uh, Dying Light Two, right? Yeah, it would get maybe a few shares and whatever. Sure. Right? But if you put a release date, that probably gets way more traction. But, but like, so for a product to be successful, they probably have a formula for this, or at least some data on this. It needs to be in the news cycle, let's say, for X amount of time. Mm-hmm. So my question is, is does the release date, like the release date, like if you release the release date today, hypothetically, of, of something, it's going to be in the news cycle for, depending on how big the product is, for like maybe three days. <laughs> and it'll die down in those three days too. It'll be big the first day, a little less, a little less. And then it's just kind of like a there. Yeah. So my question is, though, is like, what's the problem with having that three day block closer to when it's out? So when they're already just testing it, this could be part of the plan, though. They give some fake phony release date. It right. gets shared. Everyone talks about it. Yeah. They then say, oh, we got to delay it. They then have another chance to say it's now coming out on this date that gets shared and everyone's talking. But about is it. that does that give you more sales? And I'm asking, I don't, I don't do think you? the marketing department is necessarily interested in sales. They're interested in the buzz they can generate around it. Which they think leads to more sales. The more awareness people have of the game means the more likely they are to buy the game, right? Yeah, you do reach you do reach the more hobbyists. Mm-hmm. The, like the bigger the game, like like Call of Duty news reaches the people that only play Call of Duty, and the people that only play Call of Duty don't really follow gaming other than Call of Duty and like Battlefield. Call of Duty news has really kind of just become <laughs> it's just constant. It's it's now like a sports game where it's just like it's all the time. The people who know about it know about it. And it doesn't really boil to the top. Um, Just but it was like 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 a bunch of the games of the, the last decade, the best selling games were all Call of Duties. There's they're still major sellers. It's crazy. Yeah, like it it certainly 
It certainly isn't anything new anymore, but it certainly isn't going away. Yeah. I'm going to insert a story that just popped up. We got breaking news? Yep. You got, you got, you got like a sound effect that... <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. Just looped that yeah. over and over again. <laughs> just copy paste it. Knights of the Old Republic remake might oh, yeah. be back in the cards. Mm-hmm. Um, a source, two independent sources that mm. gave prior information, mm. uh, ones that were, a- were able to uh, correctly predict um, the Ewan McGregor Obi Wan series, which that, which got like kibosh. Well, it's, they're not. They're saying they're, they're reworking the scripts indefinitely. Indefinitely kibosh. No, they're um, reworking the scripts. But the release date has not changed. Yeah, that a new Knights of the Old Republic game remake, reboot, C-boot. soft reboot, whatever you want to do. Seaboot. Seaboot, but it would be reworked to Fit the to canon. fall into to the current canon. Now, this is interesting because the rumor for the next era of Star Wars movies is supposedly going to take place in the High Republic era, which is the Old Republic. Is it High Republic or Old Republic? So it was traditionally called Old Republic. For some reason, they're calling it High Republic. These are rumors, mind you. Yeah. Um, so that might be a tie-in then, maybe. Maybe that would be the 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 Tika what Watiki was that guy's name? The director. Uh, Taika Watiki. Watiki. Yeah. Maybe that'll be his movie. That'd be cool. Yeah. Although, well, he he directed a couple episodes of uh, The Mandalorian, so he's certainly capable of directing a more like a non-comedy. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. But. Hey, Nice Little Republic. Have you ever played that game? I tried. I actually gave up on it. I played the... How did I play it? I had a disc, the original Xbox disc, and I was emulating it on the 360. Mm, okay. And that's how I was doing it. Mm-hmm. I kind of gave up. Then. I really liked it. Yeah, I, I have I'm, sure, I'm sure if I went back and I gave it a fair shot, I would, but now that it's not even part of canon... It doesn't, feels, gonna, doesn't feel worth yeah, it. I'm yeah, I'm not going to bother. Yeah. All right, our final story for the the, uh, the week. Ubisoft wants to make its games more unique and is restructuring their editorial team. This comes to us from GameSpot. Uh, Ubisoft has announced its plans to change up the structure of its editorial team, the group of individuals largely responsible for the design and story direction of all the company's games. By changing how the group is organized, Ubisoft hopes to better differentiate its games from one another. Uh, quote, We are reinforcing our editorial team to be more agile and better accompany our development teams around the world as they create the best gaming experiences for players. Uh, Unquote. Uh, Ubisoft said, according to VGC, uh, for context, in the past 100 or so... Sorry, in the past, the 100 or so group of designers and producers that comprise the editorial team were the leading influence behind the similar design in Ubisoft games. Open world with lots of side quests, multiplayer or online in-game elements and storylines themed around real-world issues. Uh, This is according to VGC's report. Uh, Quote, in the previous system, that editorial uh, had... Words are tough. No, they are, yeah. I don't (laughs) get that. In the previous system that editorial had, there were often the ideas of just one or two people getting put into every game. That's why you tended to see such similarity, because it's the same taste and opinion being replicated. So me and Matt had this conversation, how all their games feel the same. Oh, yeah. Um, but even games of that era, not even just Ubisoft games, mm-hmm. like Batman Arkham Origins feels like it could have been a Ubisoft. Because it was very much that kind of... Go to tower, unlock tower, open up areas, yeah. go do things, move yeah. on. So, but yeah, because like it, you... It, it, the Watch Dogs and the Watch Dog 2 games or game, it just feels like an Assassin's Creed with like a different layer. Yeah, and apparently the Division 2 sales weren't great. And so that's maybe giving them pause. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be interesting to see where they can go, though. Because they're, they're, they're kind of just known for that game type now. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see what they can do um, trying to get out of that. In, in hindsight, with the Division, they probably shouldn't have done the Division 2. They just should have kept on tacking on expansions. Well, it was the like same. Like, sell, sell your cities as as tack-ons. Like, yeah. So yeah, that'd be all right. Say yeah. Washington, here's Boston, I think Toronto. that's why we stopped playing it, because it was just the same game. Yeah. It was just, it was literally Division 2, which, I mean, yeah, it should be, but it didn't offer enough new to make it worth playing more. Yeah. For me, also, the fact that I did not particularly appreciate the wiping of progress at the end. <laughs> right. Resetting everything did not sit yeah. well with me. And indefinitely, like it kept resetting. Yeah. Like you couldn't even win it back yeah. again. No. Yeah. Also, um, 
that second uh, Ghost Recon game. A break break point break, break point? point didn't have great sales either. The pro- the problem I, with those games is that like is that the, the worlds are incidental. Mm-hmm. The like even the NPCs in the first like in Ghost Recon Wildlands they don't even wear their hats correctly. Like it just looks like like a, a the, somebody took a top hat from a distance and like dropped it on top of their head. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the NPCs are useless. Like you you don't care about them. None of them like talk right. They all have like the same clothes on. There's like eight different generic like whatevers. It's all very sterile. The towns are like I don't know what the names of the towns are. There's like five or six characters that you go after. Like there's El Sueño and you know crap like that. There's yeah. a couple of like officers you 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 recognize, but it's just it's very much like I don't care about. Like in 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 Red Dead, it's like every city and town has a very like Annisburg is a mining town. Van Horn is like very unique, becoming yeah. a ghost town. Yeah, Saint Denis is the city, like etc. Rhodes is like the little the little town. Mm-hmm. It's 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 believable that it was a real like you yeah you believe it whereas like assassin's is that not, nothing in assassin's creed i've ever felt it was just like i was always it was con it was constantly janking you always saw the seams that held everything together yes it was constantly reminding me that i was playing a video game mm-hmm. yeah. there well i i was saying i think i've said it on the show before but like with origins there was a couple of times where like i've actually gotten to the point where i don't even listen to the story i just literally put on a podcast and just i don't even listen to what they say and then I just wait in the objectives, like, go capture this man. Be like, all right, I don't even know why, but it doesn't matter. Because it, I literally am going to have to capture 80 people in this game because there's going to be, like, 300 missions. So why but do I I find care? that weird for you, though, because you you usually hang on to the story details that Ryan and I won't even. <laughs> like, it's like, when we, like, when we were playing The Division, you yeah. were citing off some major story beats about, yeah. like, this. I'm like, what the? Like, sure, if you say so. I, I didn't fucking retain any of that. So I find that weird that you would give up on like you would you wouldn't care about the Assassin's Creed stuff, but I think I think the reason is, is because, because I did because a couple of missions where it, it what, like what they said wasn't correct. Maybe okay. Like they were like they were literally like spy on these people that are selling arms, and I go to the market and they're not selling arms; they're in fr- they're in fruit stalls, like they're just surrounded by apples and stuff. But they're like being like arms for sale? No, no, these are apples. <laughs> like, so that will break your game. For like you? it's just sort of like I've, then I realize it's like one of those scenes where I'm seeing like oh somebody wrote a story and somebody else made a world and then they're like well we need a marketplace this is close enough and they just put the people there. It's mm-hmm. interesting that they said that they have like a group of like a hundred people or so. Yeah, okay. and like one or two of the ideas get chosen every time. Yeah, so it's it's really strange. And how do you have a hundred people choosing the vision for the these games? That's crazy. Would you say that Ubisoft should should spend more time per title? No, not necessarily. They spend a lot of time. They per spend title. a lot of but time, yeah, but like I Ghost Recon is pretty buggy. I think they just yeah. need to release less stuff. I think that, that's just, what I'm saying. Like though. like like Assassin's Creed over ten year span is more than ten games. Yeah. So like when you have when 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 like that spend more time on each one. Yeah. Well, they did spend a lot of time on this Assassin's Creed because they had multiple teams working on them, so they did get the full development cycle in. Yeah, I would but, say AC yeah, but is one of their better. Yeah, but you're drowning your fan base, your fan base with them. Like you, there is their, their argument to that always was, um, people keep buying the game. So that yes, they made an Assassin's Creed every year, but people kept buying it every year, and so why would they reduce how many they make when people just kept buying them? It makes sense. It it makes sense, but like. They like, did, they like did they, reduce they, slightly. They, had, they, they had took to a year anticipate, off. They had to anticipate the crash at some point. Yeah, but they did. They did change up AC though. They took that year off, right? And then Origins came out, and it's a completely different game than any AC before it. Did they it's take basically a, an RPG now. Yeah, did, 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 did they not also take a year off in between the France debacle and the Syndicate? Like, no. was there not a break, or did they go straight from no the France? The, the Syndicate was already in development when when Unity came out, so that came out the next year. Then they took that year off. The movie came out. Oh. And then Origins came out. I thought there was also a year off in between France and England. Like, Origins is good. Like, it's definitely, like, playable and the world's really good. I just think mm-hmm. that the side missions are very lacking. But you said that's kind of fixed in Odyssey a bit, right? Like, I mean, like, I mean side quests are always side quests, right? It just, it just, feels, don't like, do it just feels like I'm being drowned <laughs> a bit in Origins, I think. Where it's just like I or don't like, I, I like oh really, okay well like I really don't care about the side missions. You might you might like Origin um, Odyssey less then because there's just persistent side quests in that game. Because I I was talking to Aaron and I was saying I was saying that I was doing side quests and he's like well why are you clearing the map and I said no and he's like I agree he's like he he was saying that like there's just a lot like like the map is 
freaking packed. Like the old ACs, you could kind of stay in a district and just do, mm-hmm. you know, your 10 missions or whatever. Mm-hmm. But in, in AC Origins, it's just literally like, holy Christ, I'm in this one town in this district and there's eight towns in this district and this town is like 30 missions want, in it. <laughs> You're saying, holy Christ, I, I kind of want a, a Canadian-based Assassin's Creed. You got the one. Yeah, yeah, the, they went the, up to Canada. Yeah, they went to, to there's some some St. John stuff, but like I want like a just a like a hardcore like you know the 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 Ontario flag now is the Canadian flag. Oh, <laughs> like I want that somewhere. But right. there's not there's not much history in Canada to really. We could find us. We could find a part of history where we can make you a could story absolutely work. do yeah. something would, about the railway. Yeah, you could absolutely do mm-hmm. something about the railway. And you could have one be the Assassins and one be the Templars, the two companies. And 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 the three major cities that you have across the game are three different cities across Canada. Assassin's Creed, and Hell then you on use wheels. the train to, to travel between them. Oh man! Oh man! Assassin's Creed Mounties. There's no, Assassin's much. Creed Hell on Wheels. I prefer Assassin's Creed Mounties. <laughs> Fucking Mounties. Yeah. yeah. Ryan, what's the last time you used this controller? Uh, I don't know. It was like, quite dusty. Yeah, I don't use it. No. Yeah. You you need a magic eraser too. You got got some black cucka down here. <laughs> Do you do you do everything in those games in the new in the new ACs Origins and Odyssey? Yeah, and yes. he does it again on PC when he buys it on PC. Yes. No, but do you do everything? Like you clear that city because because you leave that city after you clear it, you like look back, you do a couple missions or whatever, you come back, and there's a bunch more missions there again. <laughs> like uh, it's, it, it, it's fucking insane. That is, it's just a lot of stuff. Like I, the missions don't come back, but I do clear areas, but not. Not like 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 I mean I mean like a higher level side mission will show up later. No, and it's like damn, like what the heck's going on here? Well, you, you know you know what the worst are is is I don't play a lot of side missions to begin with, but when I do play side mission and it's a repeating one that does pop oh, up yeah. again, it's like nope, I did it, I I know I did it. You can get a, you can go away. Odyssey has like several tiers of missions, so you have like your main story missions. Yeah, you have your side quests, and then there's like a bounty board thing where you can just do random missions in in like every town and then there's like ones that you can do to get a uh, special currency to spend at a certain uh, vendor to get special weapons um so i don't i don't like do all those but i clear the main and secondary objectives and i'll even go through and and discover every check mark that's on the map what map. what i think it might or, be um, question mark what I, what I think it might be and i don't know whether this or odyssey does this is there are like side mission stories where the side mission on the map appears to be the same, so there's not like a tiered system. But you'll like, let's say you, I don't, I don't know if I'm making this up, but it's like you save somebody's daughter, and then later on another side mission will like appear, and it's like you're working with the daughter to like get revenge because she was kidnapped or something. Mm-hmm. So it's like that, like I didn't get a repeat mission, but it's like a continued story piece. Right. So it's like why the hell, or like not why the hell, but it's just like there is a lot of content. Not to mention, like, I was just screwing around for, like, three hours on these pyramids, like, getting, finding tombs. And I'm like, what's going on here? Like, I'm just... Like, I just picture like, you now climbing... Like, the world is packed, like... I, I just picture you now climbing, like, a structure, just wasting three hours. <laughs> yeah. No, Odyssey's the same. The oh, frick, man. It's it's just a lot. Like, damn. Yeah, I didn't I didn't necessarily spend 100 and whatever hours it was in Odyssey because I, I, I liked the game. I did like the game. But it's just like, yeah, there's a lot to do. I feel like I think, I think I'm just going to do the story because i like doing the story and mm-hmm. i like seeing the world i just think i'm doing too many side quests yeah right there it's just too much yep. well that's what they said you can you can make assassin's creed as long as you want although you have to you have to grind though yeah but yeah way she goes yep the only well, the only the only, the only time games there. the Jesus. only time i'll willingly do side quests is if i'm not powered enough to do the main quest we left like a bunch of dying light side quests not cashed in but done yeah, I'm I'm totally fine that, with that. We didn't get the reward. We never leveled I, up. We, Matt, we were too low Matt, level in the next Matt, zone. I we kept sleep, getting our ass kicked. I sleep at night. I don't give a shit. <laughs> well, I, I certainly sleep at night, but I kept getting our ass kicked. Whatever. And then you you couldn't beat the game. Yeah, I gave up. Well, I haven't given up. I think I still have it installed. So there's still a small part of me that thinks I'm going to go finish it. You need to play Syndicate is what you need to do. Oh, there you uh, go. Y- yes. You're done Unity, right? Yes. Yeah. No, but I want to play the dumb spinoffs too. The China, India, Russia ones. Those you can play in your free time. Oh, like like Syndicate. Play my free time. <laughs> yeah, Syndicate's good. I like Syndicate. Why? Why is? Why are? Why are Ubisoft games all about like the main story and not doing the world and stuff? 
Does that make sense? Man, I, need you to I think that's the biggest like hmm? issue with it. Man, I need you to say that again, but right. <laughs> Thank you. So it's like I what I'm finding is is like I was just thinking through if you think about like Ghost Recon, the only sort of, if you will, detailed missions are the ones that are about the story. So it's like if you go to kill this particular cartel boss, they have a very like a particular a compound that's very themed about them and it's very detailed about them and whatever. But then if you go to do a mission about like, oh, there's a, I, rem I actually remember one about like a union or something. And this guy was like trying to become the leader of it or something. And you're trying to protect him. You're just in some nondescript town killing some nondescript baddies. Mm. I don't even like, I don't know the, the name of that union leader. And then it's just, you just move on. Like, why is it that it, it, it appears that the, and, and, and like, I don't even know what town that was. So, I think it's their formula. They, they they make an open world and then just populate it with stuff to do and don't actually think about crafting the world as a story. Mm -hmm. I think that's their. I think that's what makes their games feel like their formula. Yeah. Because yeah. if you think like Steep is pretty unique. In terms of yeah, from from the other games, sure, yeah. Like like Steam's pretty unique. And it didn't sell. <laughs> I didn't. Well, pretty good though. Max level there. But <laughs> yeah. re remember, remember when that game was their end announcement game at one? Yeah, hell yeah, that was their. That one, was one their last big thing reveal. They stopped doing that after that. Yeah. All right, that's all the time we got. Uh, so like and subscribe to us. Um, on the YouTube, and also we're now on a bunch of uh, podcast platforms. On the YouTube. We were on a bunch of them before. Yeah. I don't know what Podcast Garden was doing. Well, put it this Take way. Our, our stream is, our, our RSS feed is now hosted on Anchor. But you can find us on Apple Podcasts. You can find us on Google Play Podcasts. You can find us on Spotify. I thought we were on all those to, before to begin with. Yeah, you can find us on CastBox. You can find us on... There's also there's also Google Play Music, me, and then me, there's me, just me, Google Podcasts. Here. Uh... Overcast. Oh, uh, Breaker. 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 Yeah. So there you go. Overcast. Subscribe and uh, rate us, please. Yeah. I think our one rating on Apple Podcast is just, it's all right. <laughs> oh, no. It's, pre it's pretty good cast. No, but the, the title of the review is it's all right. Oh. And then pretty good cast. Five but, stars. But it's pretty good apostrophe yeah. cast, as in <laughs> podcast, not, not us specifically. Yep. Well, damn. Yeah, oh, yeah, I see. Where you're, yeah. yeah, damn. It's apostrophe cast, so yeah. it's a podcast. Yeah. And me, me and Matt are on the Twitch sometimes. Twitch.tv slash Damon Patch Podcast or Media. Sorry, Damon Patch Media. And we'll see you guys there. Come say hi. You're just looking at us. What are you doing? No, we're looking at you. Yeah, we're looking at you. No, we're looking at you. No, I'm looking at you. <laughs> see ya. Peace.